The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, how great are we have to be in this unique dispensation of the church age, and how thankful and grateful we need to be to our Lord for the privileges that have been bestowed upon each and every believer in the Polytema one. This portfolio of invisible assets, which meant to say riches in Christ, the grace of our Lord. How great we need to be thankful to the Lord that we have been given, we who are nothing, we who do not know any rituals of the Old Testament time, we, we who not even know the Lord who is our Savior. But after Christ coming to this world, made manifested, telling that whosoever believes in the world upon me, he has been now termed as a church, that he will no way perish, but have an everlasting life. Not only simply an everlasting life, he has given upon us this polytheism of privileges. The polytheism of privileges which we can note, the mystery doctrine of the church age, the unique spiritual life, the invisible heroship, the invisible power given for us to permanently indwell in us, the portfolio of invisible assets, the riches in grace. The baptism of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, number one, which, reiter which unites us in eternal relationship with Lord in the top circle, which is our status quo of permanency in Christ, because we share our Lord's righteousness, we share our Lord's eternal life. Since we share our Lord's righteousness, even in the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, 7 and 8, it tells, the world will be consumed out in smoke and in fire, but the way who do not believe in the righteousness of Lord, likewise they will also be consumed out. But the one who believe in the righteousness of the Lord shall stand forever. That is what you and I have been given, the righteousness of Jehovah. Jehovah. This great righteousness of so great importance, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not, our Lord has said long back, even through the prophet Jeremiah, I did not give them this Levitical priesthood, Levitical codes of sacrifices. I made it for you so that you can not be dying in your unfirm nature, but rather you can come back to the firmness in Christ and obey his word. So in order to make that, to come back into the firmness of Christ, you will have to need to give a fellowship. And to be in fellowship, I have to actually take out your life. But as the way he really spared Adam, he spared even the people of Israelites, though they were thinking that they are really graced out because of their energy, because of their strength, because of X, Y, Z trends. But the reality behind that is, Lord was accepting their sacrifices and sparing their life. And he took in behalf of that animal, in behalf of them, the animal's life. And that's what it is a judgment. It is not a grace. The grace is to really obey his word and to follow. That's what Lord says in Jeremiah 7, 21. First you hear, then I will be your God, and you walk in my status, then you will be happy, you will be safe. But they thought, Lord requires some sacrifices, so the only end will be to follow the rituals without reality. That's what they took. Even the same legalism is being practiced today in the churches. They don't want to look upon the true grace of Lord by using rebound and getting back into fellowship and learn the word of the Lord and leave behind a legendary impact by the strict academic discipline which they have to take through the self-discipline of their soul. And they think that Lord requires what ultima? Pay some penance. Do some work. And that is what it has been turned out again. Therefore, our Lord said in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. That's simple. And we, the church, have been so great enough to possess those commands, to, give on us, to be given for us, to reach that maximum glorification of Christ without wasting your time. We are not going to stay here on this earth for more than thousand years. 
Our lifetime is greater when it has been great in the sight of the Lord to reach that status of MGG and finish up the race that has been kept before us. It will take minimum 70 years or 80 years, whichever manner where Lord seems fit. At the end, greater, if the greater failure for you to reach that MGG or to have that consciousness enough for you for that fear of the Lord, Lord knows how to remove you out from this world. You may be 35 years old, 36 years old, sudden heart attack and you die. What is this happening? When the scripture tells for us in Psalms 116 15, precious, very rare in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Why does Lord want you to die without knowing the truth? Without living a life that is glorifying the Lord? No, the hardness is in your heart. The evil is in your heart to reject Bible doctrine, to love the Lord, to love the truth. Lord in his own mind knew very well, if he is going to further take you and keep you here on this earth, even then too you are going to go still negative towards doctrine of which you are walking contrary. Therefore, Lord disciplines through that person so that the people who are present others, the thought those who are alive, can learn the importance of his life. What for life our Lord has kept us alive here on this earth, with these so many great privileges of Polytema 1, to glorify him, to live a life that is glorifying to the Lord. We are not here to live our own life. Your logistical grace, your beans and bullets, Lord will supply, but that is not the life. The life is to go upon for ultra super grace, a grace believer who has reached the status quo of MGG, a believer who has been learned the Bible doctrine, the believer who has disciplined his soul in taking in the word of the Lord so that he should not be ashamed when he appears at the judgment seat of Christ. That's what we find a principle in Second Peter 1, 3 and following till to the verse 7. And why aren't we understanding these truths? Replacing this with legalisms. Thinking that, why Lord requires knowledge? Okay, Lord requires weekly or monthly tithes. I just attend weekly to the church. I put my offerings. Lord is happy with that. The same principle which Lord says in Jeremiah 7, 21, 31. I have not given them the sacrifices because it has never come to my mind to take the sacrifices. I have told them only one thing, to hear and obey my word. To walk in my status, to walk in the principle of integrity of the word. The same thing in John 14:15. If you allow me, keep my commandments. That's as simple as that. But what do they want today? They want legalism over grace. As the people wanted judgment over grace in the Old Testament time. Even in the my messenger of Malachi, our Lord tells, once again I'm going to purge these priests, these Levites, these kings. And I'm going to go through them through the doors. As the refiner will take away the doors from the silver and gold, I'm going to take away their stupid righteousness and I'll put them my righteousness. What a great truth it is. I wish that same thing could be done in our pastor's mind today. To look upon the righteousness of Jehovah, which has been constantly, permanently imputed to you. And for that righteousness, which are meat, you need to work out. Which are hindering, you need to cut out. Put a knife to your flesh. You are not here to change the glory of Lord to a lie. Or you need to worry for the softies. Or you need to go for some handful of barley or for some pieces of bread. And what are you here for? You are here to learn Bible doctrine. That's as simple as that. That's as great as that. And why is it we are not able to understand? Because we neglect doctrine. We love the flesh. We love not the spirit. If you love the spirit, the flesh deeds will, will be dead. Because you know a simple logic to be taught. If you are sitting in a dark room, tightly closed, if you put on the light, the darkness goes off. And if you off the light, the darkness will come. That means when you love, let get the Holy Spirit, enlightenment process will go on. When you sin either by thought, word, or deed, when you support your flesh, light will glow, light will go off, and the darkness will come. That's as simple. But both cannot reside together, half dark, half light. No, no way possible. 
with the Lord, it has to be 0% spirituality or 100% spirituality. No between the numbers is accepted. That I am 99.99 pure to the Lord, I will be in fellowship now. Can you tell when that lightness is for 99.99 and that 0.01% can be in darkness in the same room? No. When the light comes, darkness goes. That's as simple as that. Your brain has to comprehend over it. You cannot say, no, I have some darkness over here. No. When the lightness comes, darkness perishes off. And when the darkness comes, the fellowship will be broken. Lightness will go. That is what with your spirit, that is what with your mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in fellowship works out. When you are there constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you are walking in the Spirit, you are living in the Spirit, and you are yielding unto the fruit of the Spirit. That's as simple as that. But when you reject the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what is happening? You are walking in darkness, walking in the flesh nature, walking in carnality. And that's what it is happening today in our churches. The pastors think that that darkness could be erased by following some penance, by following some rituals. That's what the Old Testament and samples did by not obeying the word of the Lord. Even today, the pastors are practicing the same thing in the church age. The license to get back and serve the Lord is 1 John 1 9 rebound. And they don't want that. They don't want to consider it. They want to look it. They don't want to understand it. 1 John 1 9, they think it is legalism could be replaced by 1 John 1 9. God loves back you in the same principle of grace. He doesn't want your works. He doesn't want your human energy. Your human energy works and your evil things have been absolutely broken out in Romans 6 1 through 5. Powered by Satan. For your roles in nature, those deeds have been absolutely erased out. And that is what is happening today in our pulpits, in our churches. They don't consider that this power has lost its soul in one when you believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, your human flesh always tends to compromise with the Lord by following some legalism trends. I will be fasting. I will be wailing. I will be weeping. I will be paying money. So that Lord can get back. No, you need to take the responsibility of your own decisions. You need to take the responsibility of your own walls in nature attitude. And you cannot claim XYZ trends, dear brethren. Take it granted to your brain. You cannot claim. You need to be very faithful to Lord. You need to be very true to your own self for your own consciousness so that you can be true and faithful to the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who knows very well what are you. You may be not known to your beside friend, but Lord knows because he permanently indwells in you what are your thoughts, what are your motives, what are your intentions. Be constantly careful with the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Who is a divine person permanently indwelling in you? It is not some power, it is not some wind, it is not some XYZ as many theologians try to claim. The problem with that is they have learned this wind of doctrine fighting to blow the beats purely because they have not learned the knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brother. They have not learned. And greater our failure to understand the simple truth. Greater will be our failure of life to know why are we being kept alive with this great polytema privileges in this church age. Dear brother and ponder over these things as we shall continue in the next day. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.